A short week for traders. The markets will be closed for Good Friday. Joining us right now to talk about the week ahead and beyond is Lori Calvacina. She is RBC Capital Markets, head of U.S. strategy. And, and Lori, we have seen the markets um, really have a pretty phenomenal year to this point. I think the S&P has already set 20 new highs before we even reach yeah. the end of the first quarter. Um, you're looking at all of this and your target for the S&P 500 is below where it stands right now. Yeah, and look, I think this is one of those moments, right, where we're taking on a lot of information and digesting some conflicting cross currents is how I put it. Um, so I think if you want one stat that just sort of explains why it's been such a good year and why it could continue to get even better, just look at GDP forecasts. So a consensus is right now looking for about 2.1 percent this year. And to start the year, it was closer to one. As recently as mid-February, it was about 1.6. Last summer, it was 0.6. So this whole idea that we're on the brink of recession, that's just been brushed aside. And now the debate is, how hot is the economy? And one of the most common, you know, sort of worry points I hear from investors over the last month or so has been, is the U.S. economy so hot, the Fed can't possibly cut? Um, it is a <laughs> mirror... such a weird worry, right? Yeah. It, think it, about things. And it, it's so weird if you think back to last August when people were like, well, you know, the Fed isn't going to cut, it's, t inflation's going to be sticky, and they're going to drive us right into a recession. So it's the same worry, the Fed's not going to cut, but it's just the complete opposite in terms of the economic setup. Okay, so that this weird cross-currents, I, I think about all the people yeah. that are trying to figure this out right now. The Fed's facing the same problem. Right. Uh, do we cut rates? Do we stand pat? Do, uh, a few months ago, we were, or even a month ago, we were asking if they'd have to raise rates because right. inflation has been hotter than expected. Um, Goldman Sachs has kind of a weird way of dealing with this today. I think they're sticking with their S&P target of 5,200 for yeah. the year end. But they've got another group of analysts led by Costin, David Costin, who's saying there is a chance that big tech is going to take this all the way, the S&P 500 all the way, another 15 percent higher to 6,000. So how do you yeah. do that? How do you kind of, as somebody who's responsible for saying where the markets are going to be at the end of the year, how do you figure it all out? So the way a lot of us do it, we'll say this is our base case, this is the bull case, this is the bear case. And, you know, I will say even within our, in our own mind, Modeling. We have this one valuation model, and one, we run all kinds of stress tests on it. If I just take current consensus projections, it points to 5,400 on the S&P at the end of the year. If you use my earnings number, if you use consensus, it's 5,700. Now, I actually don't really believe those consensus estimates right now, so I ran a new stress test where I kind of softened them a bit, basically reflect what's in the Fed SEP. I point you to about 5,300 on my earnings number and about 5,500 on consensus earnings. So I see a bull case that seems very, very reasonable to me. The problem is if you look at sentiment and how quickly, again, the markets have come. So the CFTC data on buy side positioning is actually above levels we saw in early 2018, is above levels we saw in February 2020 pre-COVID, and it's above all the highs we've seen the past couple years. If you look at AAII net bulls, you're one standard deviation above the long-term average. And that's consistent with a short-term pullback in the market and kind of muted gains over the next 12 months. So, yes, there's all this great news. Have we priced a lot of it in? Markets are funny. They often run hotter than they should, especially in recoveries. And we think this is kind of a weird recovery we're in. But you have to acknowledge the sentiment data is sending some pretty, you know, sort of nasty signals right now. So as a strategist, we try to balance all of that. And sometimes it doesn't always line up perfectly. Usually the sentiment can get resolved pretty quickly and then markets can kind of recover and march on. And that's kind of my assumption right now. But I'll tell you, Becky, I've been looking for a pullback for three months and we yeah. haven't gotten it. I, and you're not alone. I mean, it, I would say this is a really weird year. But then again, you could say that probably about every year. You think to 2019, yeah. nobody was predicting or expecting that we'd have a global pandemic that would shut down economies everywhere. I think that's fair. And I'll tell you what's kind of made things make a little bit more sense in my head to me. And I've been talking about this a lot more. We wrote about it a bit this morning. I think we came pretty darn close to a recession in 2022. Mm -hmm. We had two negative GDP quarters. The stock market priced in a recession, had a similar drop. Consumer sentiment on the Michigan survey went to recession lows. Inflation spiked the way it, or the misery index spiked because of inflation, not unemployment. And you kind of felt as bad as you typically do in a recession. So I think we're in this weird recovery that nobody understands because... Okay, so that's crazy. Yeah. We've already had the soft landing, essentially. We, I, we had the landing, we've taken off again. I think we actually had like that W. Remember back in the pandemic, we were debating all the letters. Yeah. And I think we kind of had like a baby... I forgot about that until you just said that. Yeah, yeah. But, but it was like this whole V-shaped recovery. Everyone, you know, thought people were crazy for saying that. And we basically had that. But I think you kind of had like maybe a shallow, you know, kind of other V on the other side of the W. Um, and one thing about recoveries coming off of big crises, we tend to underestimate everything. People get PTSD and really just sort of underestimate earnings, underestimate the economy. And I think that's what we've done on the economy recently. So you're, 
uh, forget about the base case. The, what do you think is most likely? The most likely. I scenario? think that we're going to have some choppiness at some point this year. I think we're going to have a little bit of a pullback. You know, somewhere between five and ten percent, maybe closer to five because everybody wants it. That's not much um, of a pullback if you're an investor waiting to get in. It's not, and you know, I think we're going to have some choppiness. I would say there are kind of two camps of strategists right now. There's the constructive camp, and there's the sky is falling camp, and I'm definitely not in that latter. Lori, what, what's your total? We've had. I remember when uh, Trump was on, he said prices are up 50 percent. They're not up 50 percent, um, but yeah. they are up. I don't know what number y you would use, probably. It, it, I think 30 is probably about oh, right. Like inflation or? Yeah. From the, yeah. when well, you have well, from, a couple of yeah. years, when you have a couple of years of much higher than expected, and then it slows to three or four, you've still got right. the couple of years of much higher than, I, I just know from yeah. going, maybe I'm going to, maybe it's the supermarket I go to, it's so, I, it's so expensive, but yeah. I, I can feel it, I still feel it. And wages, have they caught up? I mean, do, are people now, a, does their dollar go as far as it did three or four years ago? Well, look, I think in terms of like food prices, right, and all the things that we're sort of confronted with on a daily basis, I mean, I have two small children, right, so I see this in terms of how much it costs to stock my refrigerator. That's what so, I mean. Yeah. yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, and Gas prices, I mean, they're, they're down, but... They're, they're not great, but they're better. Um, and I think, you know, I think you have had some wage catch up that has helped offset a lot of this. I think you have different consumers feeling things differently. So the low end, that's what we continue to see signs of a bit of a crack. If you read through like all the food companies, for example, right, or other consumer companies, they are more sensitive to short term interest rates than high end consumers are. High end consumers have done all the same things, right, that uh, companies have done, termed out their debts, locked in low mortgage rates. So they're able to offset some of these things like higher grocery prices a little bit better than the lower end. But, but people are feeling it.